Okay, I'm Dr. Castanet. I'm going to demonstrate now how the actual spinal decompression table works. I have Mary on the t Mary Ann on the table. She's going to be our model. Um, I have her here situated on the table for treatment of the low back. We have her lying face up. It's generally a pretty comfortable position for most people. There are some exceptions, and sometimes we have to modify the posture of the patient with some padding and such to make it more comfortable. Generally, what we do is we have um, a uh, bolster underneath the knees that uh, flattens the low back and keeps pressure off of the low back. We put this strap here around the lower ribs. That secures the upper torso on the upper half of the table, which is stationary. The lower half of the table is connected to these horns. We tighten the horns down on the pelvic crest or the iliac crests or your hip bones and we tighten those down so that when the lower half of the table starts to migrate south, that direction, it pulls the pelvis that way, and um, that pulls the pelvis that direction, separating the five lumbar vertebrae at the bottom between the pelvis and the ribs. Uh, the treatment is actually going on right now. This uh, monitor right here is something the patients can watch. Uh, they're also welcome to watch TV if they prefer but this is available for them to watch on the monitor. This graph right there, you can't see it from afar, but this graph has the time, it goes for 30 minutes, and it has the tension. Uh, I have her set up at 40 pounds. That's a, probably about average amount one might use for a, a larger female or a smaller male to start with. The amount of tension will be increased in subsequent sessions until we decompress the spine enough that the person um, gets maximally improved. Um, I'm going to scoot around here and show you. Uh, the table is very slow and smooth. In fact, um, most people don't perceive the movement. They'll hear and feel the table move intermittently during the course of the treatment, but they don't typically feel anything happening in their back during the course of the treatment. Some people will get relief while they're on the table, most people will feel better sometime later in the day or the next morning when they wake up. That's true after the first treatment for about 60 or 70 percent of patients. For another 30 or 40 percent of patients, they're not going to feel better or start to feel better until we increase the amount of the decompression. And of course, like any treatment, there are going to be some small number of people that we can't help with this treatment and that are candidates for injections and or surgical treatment. I should also mention just for the sake of completeness, that there are patients that fail injections and surgery that are candidates for and that benefit from spinal decompression afterwards. We treat a number of people, about 30% of the patients we see in fact have had injections before, they either stopped working or they didn't work or they don't want to just do injections as a means of treatment. We also treat many people that have had spine surgery and have hardware in their back uh, those people typically improve also from treatment. The reason is that surgical treatment for any problem is focused on addressing that particular problem at that given time. If that involves surgery at one segment or two or three or four, there are still one, two, three, four or segments that were not treated surgically and that can be a subsequent source of pain in the low back. In any case, let's get back to the actual mechanics of the treatment. The treatment uh, table measures the tension 400 times every second. It's exceedingly exacting and sensitive. That's probably one of the reasons that it seems to be more effective clinically for most patients than a conventional low-grade traction table. The concepts for the machines are similar, but the engineering is better for this table, and I think it gives patients their best chance to get better from a traction or decompressive treatment. There are other videos on the website that explain why physiologically, biomechanically, anatomically, this treatment is so effective for so many people with neck and back pain. So I'll leave uh, you to look at those other videos to explain the rationale and the background and the research behind how it works. But I wanted you to get a chance mechanically to see how it works. Uh, Marianne, what does it feel like while you're on the table? It's comfortable. Say it loud enough for them to hear. It's very comfortable. Okay. It's uh, like you said, it's very smooth. You don't 
really feel it. Uh huh. And uh, it's relaxing. I like it. Yeah. In fact, there's something probably has to do with the parasympathetic nervous system, but there's something that's very relaxing about the treatment. Many people fall asleep on it, and it probably has to do with an influence on the vagus nerve, which is a parasympathetic cranial nerve that may, by virtue of affecting structures that are stretched within the body, uh, result in a kind of a relaxation. That combined with the white noise from the computer and a typically darker room than this. I have this well lit for the purposes of, of videography, but most of the time they're in a room that is lit very dimly, and the combination of that that threesome, the white noise, the dark room, and the stretching makes it very relaxing and pleasant for most people. And uh, many do fall asleep. In fact, many, many snore. They should probably bring their CPAP machine with them. In any case, that's the way it works for the low back. Just a moment, I'm going to have Marianne set up on the neck. And you'll get a chance to see what it looks like when somebody's getting a neck treatment with spinal decompression. Thanks.